Good evening, dear student. As you all know, we are facing this pandemic and we are unable to conduct our regular classes. So I have decided to prepare a video lecture for software engineering. In this video lecture, I am going to cover whatever we have studied in our previous classes. And I have already circulated the study material for software engineering in your WhatsApp group. Please download it from there. So before defining the formal definition of software engineering, I would like to tell you a small story which help you to understand why we need to study software engineering. Consider your friend asks you to build a small wall as shown in figure A. Can you able to build this small wall just by using your common sense? Please think. Can you able to build this type of small wall just by using your experience without having proper knowledge? Answer is yes. We can build this type of small wall just by using our common sense because the size of this wall is very small. But what if your friend asks you to build this huge building as shown in figure B? Can you able to build this type of huge building just by using your common sense or without having proper knowledge? Answer is no. We can't build this type of large building just applying our common sense. If we try to build this type of building just by applying our common sense, then it would collapse because we don't have the required knowledge about the strength of material, testing, planning, architectural, design, etc. Building a small wall and building a large building are totally different. To build a small wall, we simply use our common sense, but to build a large building as shown in figure B, we must need to follow proper civil engineering approach. So why I am telling this story? How this story can relate to software engineering? For example, consider your friend asks you to write a small piece of code or a program for adding two number. We can simply write a small piece of program for adding two number just by using our common sense or without following any engineering principle. But what if our friend asks us to develop a large accounting software for his enterprise? Can we able to build a large accounting software just by using our common sense? Answer is no. We can't build the large accounting software or any type of complex software without using proper engineering approach. So that software engineering is an engineering approach for software development. We can alternatively view it as systematic collection of past experience. The Experience is arranged in the form of methodology and guidelines. A small program can be written without using software engineering principle. But if we want to develop a large software product, then software engineering principle need to be followed to achieve good quality. So it so it was the so this was the informal definition of software engineering. Now we are going to learn the major difference between program and software product we all know that the programs are developed by individual user for their personal use the example of program are adding to number factorial finding the smallest number in array these all are the examples of program which are very small in size whereas the software product are very large in size. In program, we have limited number of functionality, but in software product, we have large number of functionality. In case of program, the programmer himself use that particular program, but in other hand, in case of software product, most user are not involved with the development and user and the developer of program are totally two different kind of entity so in case of program a single developer is involved but in case of software product large number of developers are involved for a program the user interface may not be very important because the programmer itself 
use that particular program. On other hand, for a software product, user interface must be carefully designed and implemented because developers of that product and users of that product are totally different. In case of program, very little documentation is needed, but a software product must be well documentation. So we all know that the software product consists of program, program code, documentation and user manual, whereas the program only contain the lines of code. So this is the major difference between program and software product. So I am not going to make this video very long. In next video, we are going to learn what are the different types of software de development lifecycle models are available for software development. And we are going to learn it in details in our upcoming videos. Thank you very much.